All right, Marjorie, we're in the middle of a fantastic discussion. And since the Dobbs decision, uh, we're not the only ones having this discussion. It seems like a lot of families, friends, and colleagues are talking about abortion. So I wanted to ask you, our show is kind of focused on equipping people to take a stand for what they believe. What are three arguments that you would suggest people could make if they're in a conversation about this to be persuading their friends, family, and colleagues to be pro-life? What would you suggest or like three persuasive yeah. things that they could say that could turn the conversation? Mm -hmm. Well, um, I, I don't know how, um, how many numbers I'll get to, but I'll tell you one thing. One is when people persuaded me to pause and think about what the position, the pro-choice position that I had was, they, number one, um, were very good listeners. And if you believe in the transcendence of truth, generally you're going to find that the more somebody who is speaking in, uh, in falsehood or basically is saying, or saying things that don't logically or emotionally or spiritually jive, the more they talk, the kind of more it starts to, uh, it, it starts to um, unwind their own arguments. So I would say, number one, listen well. And when you're listening, you do not have to uh, contradict or counter every single thing that a person has said, but you can definitely listen to some seeds. So, and, and sometimes it's just a heart predisposition. Maybe there's something that happened in their life or a friend that they have or something that, who knows if they themselves had an abortion, perhaps their right. mother, someone that is very close to them, it's very likely that they do know somebody. And so you're listening there to the heart. So you know that it's not just a logical philosophical argument about right and wrong, about is this a human being or not. It's also about the healing that needs to happen sometimes generationally, sure. Um, sure. which includes friends, uh, uh, which includes friends, um, which, who we consider family members in so many cases. And then I would say, um, since we went to three, that, uh, that to provide a pathway uh, to con to continue that this this difficult conversation mm. uh, was difficult. You were you were given uh, mercy, some some um, points of justice that you per perhaps read in there, and then a way that that relationship continues. This is never just about an issue and winning a debate. It is almost always about a life lived and somebody who wants a life live well. Mm -hmm. And so to, um, and if you see it like that, that means you're probably gonna have to put yourself in their shoes for a little while. Uh, and then be as strong, and that makes you the, uh, the strongest advocate that you could possibly be, mm -hmm. because you understand. And then you can also um, persuade and then walk with that person in the future. Now, some of the people who argued against my position and and, and did a, a beautiful job, it was just like a point of light. They argued with me. Uh, I remember I was at the Heritage Foundation. There were people there at that time that were pro-life. There were people there that were pro-choice, libertarian, kind of like me. But I remember having these arguments and then moving on. Right. And they'll never know that they planted a seed in my mind and in my heart that didn't die. Mm -hmm. And so I would just say, be happy with the seeds you plant, even if you never see the fruits, because they may be found in heaven if you didn't see them here on earth. Mm. And maybe you asked me a question beyond that, that I'm not really sure. <laughs> I, no, that answers it. A couple of things I just want to uh, pull out that I think yes. are important to note. One of the things I hear you saying is, people who were courageous, courageous enough to say something made a difference, even if they didn't know it. And sometimes yeah. it's a little bit scary to even say yeah. the truth because we don't right. know if we're going to offend, if we're going to mess it up, if we're going to get in trouble, if we're going to say it wrong. Mm -hmm. But what you're saying is a lot of these people along the way who mm -hmm. you encountered said things that made a difference. Another thing I hear you say, which I really respect about you, is once you see, you can't unsee. Once you saw the truth, you did something about it. Mm -hmm. um, my daughter saw something this weekend. She's nine. And so she told me I had to do something about it. And I said, no, <laughs> you saw it. <laughs> you have to do something about it. 
Oh, well, what yeah, can I do? Funny. I said, well, you're nine, do something. Well, I'm just mm -hmm. a child. And I said, don't ever put just in front of you. I don't ever want to hear I'm just a, I'm just a woman. I'm just a child. I'm just a, if you saw it, you are now responsible. And mm -hmm. I love that you were in college, you saw it and you started to do something about it. Mm -hmm. I, you didn't make excuses for how disempowered you are. And in so doing, you have empowered so many people. The third thing that I want to draw out about your approach, which you haven't mentioned, but I know this about you, uh, you don't just advocate for the lives of the preborn. You also strongly advocate that we support mothers because yes. pro-life is a 360 conversation. If we're going to support life, we have to support the lives of the mothers too. And when you're in these conversations with mothers who are feeling vulnerable and afraid and considering abortion, they're not considering it for some of the reasons that we see splashed across headlines. They're considering it because they don't have support. They mm -hmm. don't have the resources. They don't have what they need to raise a child. They're in a desperate situation. And we have to support mothers if we want to support the lives that they're carrying. And one of the things I like about what you do in your organization is you support the lives of mothers. And I heard that in your answer just now. Mm -hmm. um, we have to be very compassionate and sympathetic to the people who are in the situation of having to make this decision and not to shame and um, bury in our conversations or in our tone people who have made this decision uh, whose minds could be changed if we just approach the conversation differently. I really appreciate yeah. that. Yeah, that was. So your daughter and, and you have just given me chills in, in the way you described her approach to a problem, yours inspiring her as a mentor and mother father as well always there um, i think you were gonna, gonna say something i didn't want to interrupt you don't go ahead oh um but yes um 100 yes every single potential aborted child someone sent into this world to do a job solve a problem that only they could solve mm -hmm. um who is in danger of it being aborted has a mother with um root cause issues that must be addressed. There's a reason that she is attracted to that abortion center door. And they are not simple. They are right. not because she is just a bad human being. Correct. Because she's, every single woman is different. And there are a, a range of reasons, and we've studied them well, that um, that are practical reasons that we, I believe, are obligated to address. And one of the things that we've done over the past three and a half, four years, anticipating the overturn of Roe um, and a, uh, a very different world that, to, that we hope we'll be living in that embraces life, is making sure that in every state that is ambitious for life, we have mapped out well every service to woman and child across the um, range of reasons that mm -hmm. uh, women generally identify are, are why they were attracted to that abortion center and that those places are known, that they're well networked, that there's an access point to her, that we're working closely with governors and, um, and with state legislators on the legislative side, but on the pure community side. Where are those places? You live in you know, in Georgia, up near the mountains, and there's a place that can help you with food, uh, a cycle of poverty when it comes to food. Um, uh, but but what about you want to get your your GED, right? And you're going to have to leave. So so the all of those things being connected, and they they all know about each other right. within a culture of life, and not giving her the abortion as a quote easy out is just to wrap up my thoughts here is exactly how susan b anthony the woman who gave women um uh, the entryway to being involved in politics in the first place is how she thought about this mm -hmm. that every woman and her child is inextricably links linked their rights are completely impossible to separate and to give her an abortion as a quote solution to her problem is to have uh is is to invite repercussions throughout the culture um that you will never identify and can't uh and and perhaps can't solve 